done leaving you know leaving serial marker serial number as a mark <clears throat> but the stamp not only leaves a mark on on the metal let's say that it's stamped on it leaves a strain area this this by the way is is not necessarily on the surface it goes below the surface when you stamp on something it'll be strained from that surface and all the way down well maybe not all the way down but you know let's say you know a few millimeters down so people who remove uh, the scratch out the stamp whether they scratch out the serial number on the surface but the strain area is still there and the strain area is in the shape of the serial number so even if they use acid to dissolve it the strain area that was made by the original stamp is still there so if if uh, we use if we use um let's say we recover this gun and we dissolve it our own way we dissolve it completely let's say uh, what will not dissolve are the strain area strain areas like more can more concentrated you can say the the the, the atoms that, that make up the strain are more concentrated it does not dissolve as easily so when you when you obliterate it with, with the scratch marks you will not obliterate the strain area if you use the acid to eat away at that entire entire place the strain area will resist it for a little bit and that strain area will actually reveal the serial number so what we use is hcl and uh, copper chloride a solution of that will work well for steel surfaces which is what a lot of guns use and also car engines they have the steel surface this will eat away at everything that did not have a strain area and therefore eat away at everything except for the serial number enabling us to find the serial number so um, the firearm uh, evidence has got to be collected uh, in a you know in the correct way. No, this will come up quite a bit. How do you collect specific kinds of evidence? So first of all, do not touch the inside of the barrel. The inside of the barrel has the has the the scratch marks for which you can use to test whether um, whether the bullets actually can match the barrel or the gun the the firearm and the barrel uh, that the gun the gun sent its bullets through so we do not want to scratch the inside of the barrel absolutely not um check for fingerprints uh well it's hands that gripped the gun and that uh, and that um held it so check for fingerprints uh on the outside of it um remember the scratch marks leading striations on the inside check check for that um when you touch it um only touch the trigger guard edge that's that little i mean just to see where that just to show you where that was um let's take a look at the picture of a something with a trigger here just you touch this edge over here maybe in it uh, because fingerprints this is too small fingerprints in general don't show up very well over there also this part it's cross hatched uh fingerprints do not show up very well over there either because of that uh, if you want to handle it handle it only over here and possibly only over there um, um again you should be using gloves so your fingerprints don't get on it or they don't smear anything but in any event try to hold it only over here never touch the inside of the barrel don't touch anything else because we want to collect as many fingerprints as we can if they are there okay so um oops skip one okay so uh also remember guns make sure they're not loaded before you uh start playing with them and analyzing them for evidence um if it's possible uh un unload them before uh, you handle them because again we want to keep people safe uh if, if, it, if that will cause problems and it might obliterate evidence maybe you don't do that but but if you are certain that no there will need to be no problems with that unload the gun so everyone is safe However, before you do that, before you unload any of them, certainly identify the bullets in the chambers. Uh, know where, where the bullets were, how many bullets were fired. Um, <clears throat> so find out where those bullets were. Maybe take a picture of them or whatever it is, or make a note of it. Um, also, the magazine, you know, not just the bullet, not just the gun, but the magazine they use to reload it that holds all the bullets for a semi-automatic. Check that for fingerprints too. Don't forget that. Uh, every bullet whether it was uh, found in the ground after being fired or bullets that might have been uh, on the table, not fired yet, bag them separately and put separately. 
uh, if the uh, um, a gun is found in the water, uh, do not dry them because that might cause them to rust. Uh, the goes as it gets sort of dry, the surface between the, the water and the air. Uh, I'm not going to go into corrosion theory over here, but if it stays underwater, oxygen will not get into it, so it will rust. Keep it underwater until it gets to the lab where they can um, get rid of the water and uh, make sure it will not rust. But uh, for the person collecting the evidence, keep it underwater. When it comes to ammunition, um, if the bullets were fired, you know, be very careful of them. Do not scratch them at all. Remember, we're looking for striations on them, so uh, do not scratch them if you can possibly avoid it. If the bullets are embedded in some wood or anything else, try to get, you know, break away the surroundings. Don't don't yank the bullet out of the hole. Um, try to get, try to carve away the hole uh, around the bullet because we do not want to scratch the bullet in any way. Maybe at the lab, they'll be very gentle and, 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 and gently scraping away the, the, the wall that it was around, the wall piece or the, the, the brick that it was in, uh, without scratching the bullet. But uh, do not pry it out of the wall and you'll scratch it all up and, and striations will be useless, obliterated and useless. So we don't want, don't do that. If it's at all possible. I mean, sometimes uh, you can't, but uh, if it's at all possible, try to get the surroundings together with a bullet. Uh, when you put them in, when you uh, put them in, um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a case you know, or in, a, in, a, in some kind of container before sending it off to the lab, try to wrap it in tissue paper so it doesn't bang around and get scratched in that way. Um, also, you know, take a picture. Make sure you know how the spent cartridges are. Uh, if there's like a little pile on one side of the room, maybe the guy just fired in that side of the room several times and they constantly got ejected right over there. So again, that's important to know. Uh, so don't forget about that. Um, if there's clothing of a victim, uh, remember, take it carefully because we want, we want to know the location of the bullet hole. So don't tear it so we know exactly where the bullet hole was. So be careful when, you're, when it's removed or when it's um, collected and put uh, you know, in, in, in containers for the, for the forensic lab. Uh, clothing should often be dried because um, wet can might spread some gunpowder stains or whatever. So it should be dried if possible, not in the sun, because that sun might um, might uh, cause some uh, other um, other like uh, bleaching in a way or whatever it is. Do not dry it in the sun. It should be dry, but not not in the sun. And as always, do not forget the chain of custody. If you have it, your name should be there. The next person you hand it off to should have his name on. Should have his name on it. Everybody who handles and has control of these pieces of evidence, whether they're bullets, um, uh, spent cartridges, um, or uh, wipings from the hands for a gunpowder residue, never forget the chain of custody. The person's name must be there. You must be able to be identified. Okay, so um, whether it's exciting or not, that is the forensics of firearms. A lot of the forensics of firearms. So uh, you should know, you know how guns work, you know, you know, the, you know the cartridge, um, the bullet, uh, the, the you know, difference between um, a revolver and a semi-automatic handgun, uh, rifling, striations, and how they're used for evidence, uh, cartridge evidence, such as like the fire, the, the firing pin, that the imprint on the on the cartridge, and how general forensics are done, and the limitations, like for example, what if he was in a firing range? It can't prove much from the gunpowder residue. Uh, they do have databases, the NIBIN, uh, and also you should know where gunpowder residue comes from, where it deposited, like like the hand. Um, if it's close, uh, then it might be on uh, clothing that's close or uh, places that are.